Hi, this is Jason. You're still watching the Backroom Comics podcast coverage of 2010 Emerald City Comic Con. I'm here with Ben Templesmith and Ben McCool. Hello. Hey. So, uh, the reason we wanted both these guys together is that they drew a comic together, Choker. Um, this is your first comic, really, of like a, a creator-owned, at least. So you've done a couple pieces. Yeah, pretty much. I'm the new guy. Um, I've done like a few little one-shot stories here and there for DC. I did some shorts for Image, but nothing too major, to be honest. This is my first creator-owned book, my first mini-series, and I'm lucky enough to be working with this dashing young gentleman here. So you know, it's going good so far. All right. Um, so yeah. And uh, you, I mean, this is uh, you've done a few things here and there. A little bit. Um, what was it about Choker that drew you in that you wanted to... Well, it wasn't about Choker. It was actually about working with Ben McCool, first and foremost. Ah. I met him and like, we should probably do a book together. If he can write the way he talks, I think he's going to go somewhere. <laughs> yeah, so I knew that was first. I don't do things on a project basis necessarily. It's more okay. on a personality basis. It's like, right. no, we should do something together. We can work something out. Okay. It's like with Fell. Uh, I never agreed to do Fell. I agreed to do a book with Warren Ellis. Just so happened it had to be, had, was Fell, and that's what he had in mind. So okay. I know Choke was something Ben had uh, planned quite a while as a sort of a passion project of his, as an original thing. So listen, why not? Okay. Sounds good. Fair enough. And then I guess it's sort of inevitable with when you've got a disgraced detective, a dark town, there are going to be inevitable comparisons to Fell. Yeah, you uh, Were you familiar with the story? You yeah. Ran, yeah. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's not so much a disgrace detective. He's a detective that's been absolutely shafted. Um, issue one is, at its heart and soul, a detective story. Like, you know, most, m most prominent issue one is, should I say, issue two kind of goes a bit mental, basically. Um, it certainly introduces more the cyberpunk element, which I'm really keen to kind of, you know, have some fun with. Uh, and it certainly develops its own identity, I think. So... I understand the comparisons of Fell, and I'm obviously delighted to be in the same kind of conversation, to be honest, but, okay. yeah, you know, I'd like to think it's got its own voice, it does its own thing. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess, how's your con been so far? I mean, we're near the end of day two, and you seem the to be... The final day? Yeah. Are you telling me there's one more? No, no, no. <laughs> I hope not. I just wanted to make sure everybody else knew I'm... that we were at the end of the, you know, we weren't on, still on day one. No, I, I, I went to bed at 6 a.m. this morning, and I'm, yeah... I'm a little frazzled, but but it's been fantastic. It's, uh, I was told last year they had 7,000 attendees. This year it's 11,000. So really, that many? Wow! Yeah, it was huge for me. It was great. I had a line for like the entire yesterday. It was great. All right. And I guess uh, to go on, you've uh, you've done Wormwood Gentleman Corpse, Groom Lake, Welcome to Hawksworth. You pretty much stick with creator owned. Is there, except uh, I just picked up the one shot you did of the Baroness with Mark Andreco. I only dabble in other things really. Okay. I'm a creator owned guy. I like so to. Do Again, my that own was a original. chance to do something with Mark specifically, or were you asked specifically to do a GI Joe? Story? I just said I'd like to do a Baroness thing. Uh, Baroness. Or, okay, uh, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. And they let me. Okay, fair enough. Um, how did you get into comics? Like, what was your first? I mean, what, what... I've always been a big comics guy, to be honest. Um, I started reading the kind of British kids comics when I was really young. I got into American comics. I was 10 years old. Um, I came across, it was a part of Extinction Agenda, this Claremont and Jim Lee. Now, good buddies of Jim Lee, and I always like to embarrass him with this story, but like, I came across it, and I'm just like, wow, what on earth is that? Never seen anything like it. So, you know, started collecting then. And I guess when I was around 23, 24, I decided I'd like to give a shot of writing them. Uh, and so the rest is history, basically. But right. I've always been a fan, and you know, I always identify comic books as being a wonderful vehicle for storytelling. Right. Kind of borrow the best elements of both movie, movies and you know, full plot prose novels. You, know, you can be as flamboyant and as you want with the visuals while still incorporating various writing styles. Put simply, comics are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Your art style is very unique. Thank was you. there something that influenced you as a kid that made you want to start drawing or that's something that drew you in? No. No? All right. Art chooses you. You don't choose it. Okay. It just comes from within and, you know, the urge to create. So, and whatever I do comes out the way it comes out. Fair enough. All right. This is all by accident for me. Okay. I haven't traditionally studied or anything for what I do. So. Okay. Were you a comics fan as a kid? Is there something? Yeah. Okay. No one in comics has not been a comics fan as a kid. Find someone, please. Okay. That, yeah, trust me, I would be shocked if there was... Because everyone who reads comics, generally speaking, would love to do them, right. I think. So everyone who's a creator now used to be a fan. Absolutely. So it, to me, we, okay. uh, yeah, very few people I think would ever come in cold. All right. I know. Uh, I guess one thing that struck me is that a lot of your work is very stupid. Dark. 
That may be your word, sir. <laughs> oh, <wait a> <laughs> Um, well, it's silly. I mean, it's juvenile very macabre. humor for mature people is what I say. So. Very, yeah. How else do you describe those uppercuts? Um, but it's also very macabre. A little. And is there any point where you start to wonder if you're getting a little too dark down the rabbit hole, or are you very happy with it? No, okay. it's just my mind. It's too mind. Fair enough. I haven't been rested yet. Good. I had the Pope masturbating to a boy love magazine. <laughs> uh, I've had werewolf necrophilia. Um, yeah, I mean, what's wrong yeah, with that? Nothing at all. Sir. I'm not sued yet. No, that's perfect. Uh, edit that bit, please. <laughs> Don't give people ideas. <laughs> Especially uh, the Catholic Church. Mm. So, are there any projects coming up you want to talk about that you're uh, working on right now? Nope, I really only have big plans right now. Um, and they're lined up. I mean, I, okay. I'm going to do them. Right. But I'm really focused on Choker right now. I'm okay. literally halfway through it right now. Oh, halfway through. And so, I, I, you got all the scripts done for Choker? Or are you still working on it? Still pretty much tweaking, still working on it. You know, everything's plotted meticulously. It's kind of, you know, completely... It just needs to be typed up, in essence. Okay. So, you don't but, have to commit to me still working on oh, it. Oh, okay. yeah, it's all good. And don't worry, we're actually determined to get each part out on time. We, we right. you know, uh, no, this, issue three will be a little bit late. Okay. Okay. There we Warning go. to you fans. <laughs> issue three a little late. Only because we're on the road so much for the promotion stuff and. Uh, right. Yeah. I, I oh, saw you mention that the other day that you were drawing like on different plane, like uh, different legs. It's a week or two behind. I mean, that's fine. Yeah. 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 We're trying to okay, then. Okay. trying to get it out as close to the release date as possible. That's fair. There we go. Sure. <laughs> um, are there any other projects you're working on right now? You're I know you've got vines coming out later. This year. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's an interesting little thing I'm kind of getting stuck into. There'll be more about that revealed at C2E2. Um, okay. I'm also having another creator-owned project announced then. Unfortunately, can't talk about just yet, but that's also going to be announced at C2E2. Um, I've got a Superman story out on Wednesday, same day as issue to a choker, and some other bits and pieces that again can't bloody talk about but watch this space it'll be revealed soon enough okay fair enough so i guess uh to wrap up let's mm -hmm. talk about the new york mets how you feel oh boy 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 yeah you know uh, yeah <laughs> well, i like all games man but baseball is just like cricket for americans yeah. no it's great man um the mets however are not great last season was just no. grotesque and horrible and evil um pleased with jason bain left field um, not pleased with the rotation and the lack of additions to it. Yeah, I and think, uh, how do you feel about Daniel Murphy at first? Well, by, he's, when he was at college at high school, he played at third base, obviously right. with David right there. He's kind of going nowhere. He looks okay-ish. He's still prone to silly errors. But, <laughs> you know, let's look on the bright side. At least he's not playing left field anymore. Jeez Louise. <laughs> All right. Uh, ben Smith, Ben McCool. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thank you.